Um, we're just importing the points into our drawings. The second step after importing the points, which is a very important step that will make your work so much easier, is to create point groups. Rather than working with all the points, it's better to make them into smaller groups that you can work with each group separately where you need it. Like for example, in this file I have 2,790 points, about 2,800 points. So the sooner I can hide dice, the better my work and the quicker my work will be. Uh, that's why it's easier usually to work with smaller groups rather than with the entire points. So the first group uh, of the points we have is all points. One of the useful points that we will need down the track, we'll call it the uh, existing surface points. It's the same as all points, but we'll make a new uh, group for the existing surface, including all the points, but you see the use of it down the track. So we can include or exclude points from that surface. If there's a point that shouldn't be on the surface, it's a wrong information, for example, or information irrelevant for that surface, we can just simply exclude it from that group and that will take it out from the information input to the surface. So the first thing, let's create a new group. We'll call it existing surface, e.g. points. Include all the points and press OK. As you can see here, now all the points are shown on the screen with all the description for these points, especially for the label description now showing the point uh, number, the elevation, and the description of the point. We don't want to have all this uh, information on the screen. It's not needed for now. So we can just go to selecting these points from the prospector or the points within the EG points, existing surface points, select. I'll wait for them to be selected. As you can see, it takes time working with that much uh, points you have on your screen. So I, that's what we're trying to avoid down the track. So after I select all the points, I'll go to the properties uh, palette and I'll just go to point labels and I'll just show description only. We don't need to, to see the elevation. We don't need to see the um, point numbering for now. So that changed the point appearance just to description only. As we know, we have two existing roads. We need to mark where the crown of these existing roads. So we can simply connect to these existing roads. We need to connect to the crown points, which is the center line of these existing roads. So let's zoom in to see these points. I've got points here with the description of CR for the crown. It would be good to make those into a smaller group so we can work with them as we agreed separately. So I'll create a new group to be for the crown points, so existing road crown. I'll include the points. They have a road description of CR or crown. I'll apply OK. So as you can see, now we have those points in one smaller group. We may need down the track the boundary points, the description of these points, DTM, BDY. So we can include these points, all these points on the outer boundary as another group. So we create a new group called boundary. I'll just write BD. RY for boundary and I'll include points they have DTM and star that means any description after the letters DTM apply okay so I've got new group there always good to check what you said what you added for the group I've got all of those added that's great so now I think we're ready to start working with the um, surfaces. So we try to break the points into groups 
as much as we we know that we need for now if we need any other groups down the track we can create them but for now i think we've got everything we, we need so let's start by drawing the um center line of the existing roads and as we agree that center line is based on the crown points for the existing roads so let's isolate these points so i can just go to the existing road uh, crown points i would go select and from here i can just choose isolate objects i've got all the points here for the crown of the existing roads all what i need to do is just to draw a polyline for these points simply just to work with, I can hide the points and I keep the polylines indicating where the crown points are. I'll draw this second polyline for the second road. This is a bit curved, so I have to take them point by point. The first one was straight, so I drawn a line from the first point to the last point, whereas here, as you can see, the road is curved, so I'll just go point by point. If you can't click on one of those, just double check your snap options. So I just right click here on the snap object snap settings and make sure you've got your node snap on. It's a good idea to have the endpoints, the midpoints, the intersection. Sometimes the apparent intersection will need it and extension. Keep those on and perpendicular will need it too. So I keep all these snap settings on. Just clicking back here go back finish my polyline so it's done I'll draw another one here as we agreed we're trying to make it as much as we can perpendicular you can see the snare point showing the perpendicular uh, sign there so that's great enter um, I have finished with the polylines for the existing road so I'll just type unhide objects that will bring back everything all the points now the second thing we will need just to create a surface for these points here 